I got that sunshine in my pocket. Welcome to the Seniors Rock Show. We shine a bright light on aging with fun and entertainment combined with important information and area activities for all adults. Listen every week, socialize and connect with our caring community. For us, age is just a stage. Seniors Rock Radio is made possible by the support of our sponsors, the Greater Rochester Area Partnership for the Elderly or GRAPE, Hard Hearing Centers, Del Lago Resort and Casino, Anytime Coach Lines, Universal Care Services LLC, and Lifetime Financial Group. Now, here's the host of Seniors Rock, Joanna Palvino. Welcome back, and in the studio now, I am pleased to welcome some folks from St. John's Senior Living Communities, and uh, we're going to talk about the continuum of care they have there, and it's quite extensive. In the studio now, uh, to represent them, are Paul Bartlett, the Vice President of Senior Housing, Chris Minicucci, he works with the Skilled Nursing uh, in Long-Term Community Area, is that right? Mm-hmm. And the Green Homes, yep. really fascinating. She's an administrator. Yeah. And then Jen, she's the Vice President of Marketing, Jen Lazinski. Welcome all of you to the studio. Glad Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as I said earlier uh, in the intro, I think it's wonderful that uh, St. John's, I've seen you grow over the years and uh, add so many different options for folks in the uh, in, in living, uh, in the care communities and, and in options for living and different lifestyles. Let's start with you, Paul, um, and talk a little bit about the living options. I know there's several of them and how um, St. John's has transitioned over the years. I think you started out, am I correct in saying it was skilled nursing at one time or nursing home only? Is that correct? St. John's continues to be skilled nursing only, but in order to meet all the needs of the growing senior population, we expanded into senior housing as well. In 1997, we opened up St. John's Meadows, which currently has over 200 apartments in assisted living and independent living, cottage homes uh, for our population. And then in 2014, we were excited to open up Brickstone, and that has bungalows, townhouses, and apartments, as well as um, uh, retail space uh, for folks that live in the community, as well as our own residents. So you really can uh, age in place, as they say. You bet. Okay. Well, we don't call it aging in place, though, Joanna. We call it living, living in, in place. place. There you Thank go. Thank you. you got Thank it. you, because yep. I do. I do love your... Um, your motto, and that is embrace living. Yes. Thank you for correcting me on you that. Bet. And Paul, um, what? Tell me a little bit about Brickstone. What makes that different? What makes Brickstone different is it's a, a community within the community itself, and it's really something that we wanted to emphasize is that folks that live in Brickstone are part of the Brighton community. We're located in the South Wedge part of the city as well. So it's walking distance. It's a quick travel distance to any part of the uh, that demographic region of our area. We don't want our elders to feel like they're in a, a separate portion or kind of tucked away far away from the rest of the uh, community itself. Uh, we want to we embrace our seniors to have they want to be part of our community. And so we want to that's, keep them there. We don't want right. to segregate. Yeah. That's right. And I know um, that I've, I learned early on as I got involved in the senior arena that uh, we, we tried to do a good job a few years back when we started building these uh, senior communities or things for our elders, different places for them to live. But in doing that, we did kind of isolate them in some uh, some areas. And I think it's wonderful that the industry has, you know, kind of woken up to that and brought uh, places like Brickstone and St. John's uh, into the community. And I mean, literally into the community where you can um, easily get to those things you're familiar with and want to visit, you know, the stores or your church or um, in that kind of thing. So that's terrific. And uh, in the industry, as I said, has really been changing. And I'll, uh, I'm going to turn here to Chris, and I love, I love hearing about the green home initiatives. And uh, I know that St. John's has been um, really progressive in that area, even in the country. I think so. Can you tell us a little bit, Chris, about the green homes? Absolutely. Um, to just to back up a little bit to give some perspective. Um, so when people think nursing homes, they think um, an institutional model of care. And um, that's really kind of at the center of what the Greenhouse Project is trying to eliminate and really provide a home-like environment for people regardless of the uh, living situation that they're in. So um, in order to kind of look at how we 
get away from that institutional model of care. Um, green, the Greenhouse Project really looked at, um, you, you know, uh, not having things be so large. Um, you go to a nursing home and it, it feels very big. You have large floors. You have um, m- many, many people that, you know, f- not so many caregivers oh, have to yeah, take care of. Changing shifts mm-hmm. and all that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so they actually looked at, um, and you can kind of look at, um, uh, uh, people with developmental disabilities, they a lot of times live in a group home setting. Oh, right. And that's kind of the model that the Greenhouse Project took and kind of adapted to fit um, being able to kill, care for somebody with uh, with a skilled service, um, but still giving them as much of a home-like environment and non-institutional environment. So um, you have much smaller um, communities that people are living in um, where you would see, you know, in a typical uh, uh, nursing home, uh, r- anywhere really in the, in the country, you've got l- larger floors, um, greenhouse project. They actually limit it so that each house can be no more than 12 people in a house wow, living. Cool. So it allows for the staff that are, mm-hmm. um, working with those elders to be able to get to know them on a much more deeper level. Um, and that in turn provides better care. Um, it provides um, better outcomes for staff and for our elders. Mm-hmm. Um, we found that there's been a real sense of um, a reduced um, turnover rate with with people working in those smaller home environments. So, and we also built out in Penfield, New York, um, back in 2012. We built two greenhouse homes. Um, they were opened in 2012, and um, over the last five years, we've really seen just with the kind of the statistics that we've gathered over the five years of it being opened um our turnover rates are virtually non-existent um people want to work there um our our elders are living longer Mm -hmm. um and we have much more um meaningful relationships between our staff and our elders and our families so it's it's wonderful because you're respecting not only the 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 people that are there your residents but also the caregivers exactly and those caregivers uh, i understand even have uh you go to the even to the point where you have different names for them, I understand. Yes. It's not an aid. It's not. Is it a shaman? Is that? Shabazim, actually. Shabazim. It's, an, it's an ancient Persian, Persian word that the Greenhouse Project actually adopted. Um, it means to, uh, and I'm not, and don't totally quote me on exactly <laughs> what it means, but it, essentially it means to nurture. Um, ah. So so the idea is that uh, the Shabazim provide a kind of continuum of, of, of care from a uh, uh, direct care standpoint. So um, in a traditional uh, institutionalized setting, you have a, a CNA who, who would provide direct care. And then you have your, um, you know, maybe an activities person that comes in and, and does an activities. Um, and then somebody that comes in and cleans that person's uh, room. Um, mm-hmm. So there's three different people doing three different things. The idea is that the Shabazim are, are trained to be more universal workers. Um, so they not only provide direct care, but they, they cook for the elders. Um, they clean for the elders. Um, they put on activities. Um, they provide uh, spiritual support. Um, all the houses have what we call clinical support teams. So we have all the regulatory um, things in place to be able to run as a skilled nursing facility. Um, so you have each house is, is supported by a registered dietitian. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Shabazims are really the ones that are, are, are putting on the meals and whatnot and working with the with that dietitian to um, implement uh, different menus and, and 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 talk to the elders about what they would like to what they would like mm-hmm. to eat involve the elders in in, in uh, participating in the meal making process it's much more of giving that that elder uh, a sense of 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 home like environment and say, you it know, sounds like a family it exactly. sounds like you know the person the shabazam shabazim shabazim <laughs> can we say shabaz shabaz yep. mm-hmm. <laughs> the shabaz uh, person is almost like the dad or the mom in the family and yep. they're kind of um becoming the voice for the residents if mm-hmm. they don't have their own and um, do they sit down? I mean, everyone sits at the same table and has dinner together, and um, it really does sound like a family. And what a what a nice alternative to some of the bigger uh, types of organizations, like you said earlier. Yep, we actually that's a big part of the greenhouse project. They call it um, convivium, and that's um, having a, a meaningful meal time, not just mm-hmm. with the other elders in the house, but mm-hmm. also the staff and any families that might be there visiting. Mm-hmm. You actually see a lot of. Um, 
camaraderie with the families and the staff really because they build you know really deep relationships like you know the families yeah. have obviously a vested interest in the elders and once the the, the staff really get to know them and and and, and it, you you really get you get close to these people because you're caring for them um, so there's some really powerful relationships that get that get built that's um, wonderful yep. the the people there you know it makes a difference it really does and I think that the ambiance in a green home also makes a difference because I think you encourage, you know, having living plants and maybe a, a bird or some fish and some yeah. animals and, uh, you know, again, getting away from the institutional feeling of being in uh, in a place like that where you need care, uh, but certainly they must appreciate that feeling of being in a home and having a family and sitting with the same people and seeing the same faces every day as caregivers um, that are there for them. So I think that... Uh, this whole approach that um, St. John's has is uh, a very innovative. And so today we've talked um, to the folks here from St. John's about um, the continuum of care that they have and how they go from the, their traditional um, skilled nursing, and, and they've been doing it for years, they're wonderful at that, all the way to now some of the, these more innovative things. And I'm going to ask Paul, um, tell us a little bit more about, you know, we're, we've talked a lot about your living um, options. Tell us more about the, some, some of the services and amenities that you offer. Sure. We provide the basic amenities that a lot of communities do, transportation, dining services, environmental services, housekeeping Things like that, but then we can go beyond that, where we offer a lot of, um, a lot of choices for our residents to participate in life. We have uh, programs with our local colleges, with Nazareth College, St. John Fisher. Uh, they really want to be involved with uh, volunteer and community outreach programs, so we've partnered with uh, School 23 with a reading program with their students, Hillside Children's Center we've partnered with, Alzheimer's Association, Honor Flight our elders are involved with a variety of uh, community outreach programs. They, we meet with them on Mondays and Fridays at both of our communities, and we just have an open forum. We talk, have a cup of coffee, and we have a great turnout. They tell us what it is that they want to participate in. They tell us what, the, what are those amenities that we, what they want to enjoy. So it's like a town hall meeting sort Absolutely. of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, we, awesome. we do it 52 times a year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, do you have food? Because I know I, I go to the great breakfast meetings. You and have, food is fabulous, so you have to benefiting have benefiting from that. <laughs> Absolutely. So coffee and pastries and things like that. But, but health and wellness opportunities, qigong, tai chi, wow. hikes, restaurant trips, uh, there's no lack of things that we don't do for our uh, our folks. In, you really uh, do. You do embrace living, like your motto says. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. And I guess I just mentioned grape, and and I neglected to say that at the beginning of our interview. But we have in the studio today St. John's, and they are grape members. They are uh, with the Greater Rochester Area Partnership for the Elderly, and that's one of our sponsors. They're featured here today because they are a member, and uh, like the other members we've featured on the show every week. They are uh, in a network of a lot of wonderful people who work in the senior arena. And um, I've gotten to know uh, some of the things they offer from being in the organization. And if you are interested in being in the grape organization, you can go to grapeelder.org and uh, get more info there. Okay, this has been very interesting today. We've got St. John's in the studio here, and we're talking about the different options they have uh, as far as your uh, for living, you know, different um Things that you'll need as you uh, get older, sometimes your living arrangements need to change a little bit too. And the baby boomer generation, I think about them now in, in their planning for uh, you know their retirement years. Um, they're creating the largest senior population we've ever seen, as you know. And uh, in fact, they refer to it as the senior wave. So what does, I guess I'm going to ask you, uh, why does this make St. John's much more important. Uh, the whole idea of having these different options uh, comes to mind. Can you kind of walk me through that so it makes sense from you know beginning to end, maybe when someone enters your communities? Sure. So our folks are planners, and they've often told me that they don't want to be a burden on their family members and their kids. They want to make decisions when they can, not when they have to. They move into an independent community. We provide all those services that they no longer want to take care of, mowing the lawn, shoveling the driveway, raking the leaves, washing dishes and cooking. So we provide all of that for them, as well as all of the support services, whether it's transportation, things like that. And as they age in place or they live in place, some of their care needs could increase somewhat, and so we'll provide services for them as well. 
it may come an oppor- may come a time when they can no longer live in an independent setting. But fortunately for them, they've planned and they're within the St. John's umbrella of care. And so we say, hey, you know what? We have a wonderful place to be uh, cared for, and that's at St. John's. And Chris can talk about that. Yeah, actually, it, it, it transitions nicely. I can speak from it. From a, I, I've seen it um, just in working, and I've also seen it personally. My, I, I was introduced to St. John's um, 10 years ago. My grandparents moved up here from Philadelphia. Um, they've been living at my grandma's been living at the Meadows for uh, she's still there now. Um, and at, so at one point during her stay, she needed uh, rehabilitation care, so she came over to the home. Like after a surgery or mm-hmm. something. Yep, yeah. she got uh-huh. she she was able to rehab at the home, came back to the meadows. She, she was still in her same apartment and everything. Uh, my grandfather required um, as he as he was uh, living in place at, at the meadows, he required a little bit of an additional um, skilled need. So he moved into the, he moved into the home and he lived out his days there. And it was really helpful for my grandma and our family. She could transport to and from the meadows to the home. Um, Jane Johns provided the right transportation. In the same, in the same so area, it was sure. really you know, um, and and you and you see that a lot with people that are, are looking to come in and regardless of where they are in um in their in their need some are like paul said are planners and 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 some we 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 meet and they're they're needing rehab or they're needing long-term care and we still we still provide that even if it's not they didn't kind of start with us so um it's it's a nice thing to be able to have um that um we have our, our folks that are independent living um, to be able to say, you know, we can provide th- that extra support if and when you need it. And then we also provide that to the rest of the community. So it's a it's a nice it's a nice uh, thing for our, our folks to be a part of from a continuum of care standpoint. But also, you know, they, it, it's it's something that we still offer the community. Very good. And again, it's all about embracing living, as your motto says. Yes. And is there anything else that you want to share with the listeners today, guys, before um, we close? And, and Jen is going to share how you can get a hold of the folks at St. John's. Sure. Briefly, I just would like to say that people often ask, what makes St. John's special versus the other communities out there? And I've been a part of the other communities, and they're all wonderful. But I will tell you from personal experience that St. John's offers the most genuine family environment that you'll find anywhere and you'll get the care that you would from your own family members and i can't emphasize that enough it's just a wonderful place to work and to be part of that's wonderful thank you very much and jen would you like to tell the listeners how they can get a hold of you it's so true what paul said when you come and visit us you experience it if you come to an event or you take a tour or you have lunch in our dining room you you really experience that welcomeness so i do encourage you to come out and and have a visit with us uh it's truly the best way to make that decision uh of moving into that next step uh so I encourage you to go out to the website uh, stjohnsliving.org or give us a call at 760-1300 and we really hope uh, you'll take a look at st john's and if you can't get out for some reason, uh, and, you know, I know the snow's coming, do look at that website because they do have some wonderful videos. You can see all the different types of living options you might ha- um, care for and see what it's all about over there at St. John's and how they embrace living. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.